ദി ഒഡിസി ഹോമർ എയ്റ്റ് സെഞ്ച്വറി ബി സി ഹോമർ ഈസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഗ്രേറ്റസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രീക്ക് പോയറ്റ്സ് ഹു ഈസ് റിവേർഡ് ഫ്രം ഏൻഷ്യൻ ടൈംസ് ഫർ ഈസ് ടു എപ്പിക് പോയംസ് ഇലിയറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഒഡിസി ദ വർ ട്രാൻസ്മിറ്റഡ് ത്രൂ ജനറേഷൻസ് ആസ് ഓറൽ പോയറ്ററി ഫർ സെഞ്ച്വറീസ് The Trojan War between Greeks and Trojans is believed to be taken place around 12th century and 13th century BC. Homer wrote Iliad and Odyssey in 8th century BC. Iliad describes the 10-year war of Greeks with Trojans, whereas Odyssey deals with the return journey of Odysseus, one of the Greek heroes. The Odyssey consists of 12,109 lines divided into 24 books. It has a series of conversations, advice, request and inquiry between the mythical characters, monsters and human beings. It reveals human nature with all its complexities in simple and subtle ways. Thus it has stood the test of time, reigning in the world. as a classic due to his universal appeal to humanity. Odysseus, the king of Ithaca, returns home after the Trojan War. The poet requests the divine muse to tell him the adventures of Odysseus and begins the Odyssey in the middle of Odysseus's journey, who is held captive by a nymph, Calypso. Calypso wants to get Odysseus as her husband. However, after seven years of imprisonment at Ojeijia, escapes from the island. Once when he stayed at Thrinesia, the island of Helios, his men killed a herd of cattle and a flock of sheep. These made Odysseus. Helios became his enemy. Moreover, Polyphemus, the one-eyed son of Poseidon, held Odysseus and his men captive with the intention of swallowing them. But Odysseus succeeded in getting Polyphemus drunk and blinded it to escape from that place. This made him become an enemy to Poseidon. These all prevented him to get a favorable wind to reach Ithaca to get united with his wife Penelope and his son Telemachus. In Ithaca, as all believed that Odysseus is dead, the suitors who want to marry Penelope, trouble her a lot. Athena, the Greek goddess of war, comes to his rescue all the time. She tells Telemachus that his father is alive and asks him to kill the suitors who dishonor the state. Zeus, to help Odysseus by Odysseus, sparing him from the wrath of uh, the sea god Poseidon. God Hermes saves him from Sirs, the daughter of Helios, and God Aeolus gives him a strong wind to sail home against the rough seas created by Poseidon. Thus he gets help from from all gods for his good nature and qualities. On his way to Ithaca, Odysseus faced so many difficulties and he does his best to save his life as well as the lives of his men. However, he returns home only after 20 years to get united with his wife and son. Thus, Odyssey narrates the adventures of Odysseus and his victory at the end.
ഇൻ കിയോട്ടോ ആൻഡ് ദ ഓൾഡ് പോണ്ട് ബൈ ഭാഷോ മാറ്റ്സുവോ കിൻസാക്കു ഹു വാസ് ബോൺ ഇൻ സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ഫോർട്ടി ഫോർ ആൻഡ് ഹു ഡൈഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഇയർ സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ നയൻറ്റി ഫോർ ഹൂസ് പെൻ നെയിം ഇസ് ഭാഷോ is a well known japanese poet and traveler he was a master of haiku and hibern poems his poems influenced ezra pound and the poets of the beat generation greatly haiku is a traditional japanese poem of 17 syllables arranged in three short unrhyming lines it contains kigo a seasonal reference and is separated by kreoji a cut two complementary or contrasting images bachos in kyoto highlights the sense of yearning for something that is lost he uses an auditory image of the cuckoo song that evokes a longing for home in the minds of uh, travelers who hear it though the poet is already in kyoto the cuckoo's call evokes a sense of nostalgia for home apart from this the bird's song is also symbolic of the passing of peasant season and arrival of a harsher one the old pond of basho is actually the most celebrated haiku poem that has been translated into english the poem the old pond opens with the image of an old ancient pond representing the continuity of tradition the frogs jumping into the pond and its disrupting the peace of the pond indicates a break in tradition in its metaphorical sense it is the water that becomes the source of the sound that disrupts the quiet the translation of the poem is done by robert has the american poet translator and critic thus these two poems reveal basho's mastery of the haiku form and his ability to convey complex emotions and ideas in just a few words I have a broom Zai Yongming Zai Yongming was a prominent figure in Chinese literature during the 1980s a period that brought literary renaissance and cultural reform to China the american poets Sylvia Plath and Emily Dickinson influenced her a lot her works shows the influence of uh, literary breakthroughs in the post mao era she is always against the chinese distinction between yin and yang yin represents the feminine the shadowy side of the mountains whereas yang that uh, represents the masculine the sunny side of the mountains she stands for women and captures the contemporary experiences of chinese women in her poems 
Tsai, Yang Ming's poem, I Have a Broom, explores the theme of identity and power. Michael M. Day has translated this poem into English. The broom is a tool to clean the filth and a tool of empowerment. A woman's work is her identity and it helps her claim control of her own life and defend against ridicule of others. She finds courage and draws strength from her familial roots, especially from her mother. The broom in the hands of Zai Yongming, who narrates the poem, is actually the work that provides her a colorful life, fresh air and a path. And so she sweeps away the rubbish of today and yesterday. She puts on new work clothes. When she looks into the mirror, she finds the mildness of her mother in her eyes. She decides not to have worried looks on the colors of billboards kept at the corner of the streets. She says that she will move on greeting the morning breeze behind her with the broom in her hand and also clean the street ahead of her. Thus the poem ends with a note of determination that helps her sweep the fields, gets strength from her roots and finds a new sense of clarity and purpose towards a bright future. Won't you celebrate with me, Lucille Clifton? Lucille Clifton, who was born in 1936 and who died in the year 2010, an African-American poet, served as the state of Maryland's poet laureate from 1974 to 1985. In addition, to her numerous poetry collections, she wrote many children's books. Clifton's poem, Won't You Celebrate With Me, that talks about making of herself, was written on her getting inspired by Walt Whitman's poem, Song of Myself. In the 1960s, when this poem was written, the struggle of the civil rights movement awakened a new sense of self-awareness for African Americans. They actually experienced both a historical exile from Africa as they had their roots in Africa and a metaphorical exile from the so-called American dream. Clifton, through this poem, celebrates her hard-earned sense of identity and her place in the world. As race and gender become points of difference and defiance in the poem, she defines herself as both non-white, not black, and woman, not character. As Clifton was a non-white American, she had to live amidst racial discrimination from whites and as she was a woman, she had to suffer gender discrimination too. By saying, born in Babylon, she compares the non-whites in America to the Jews who were exiled to Babylon from Zion 
referred in the book of Genesis. By saying star shine and clay, there is a reference to the origin of the universe and the creation of Adam. Though her race and gender makes others feel that she is smaller, she has made her life up with which she is quite satisfied. Though something wants to kill her, it fails and she has won. By something, she refers racism and patriarchy. Though they tried to silence her, they couldn't. She is still very much alive and active. So, she wants to celebrate her victory. That is how the poem moves from rhetoric to image, argument to resolution. So, this poem can be considered as a modern sonnet. The understatements used through the usage of non-white and something has tried to kill me and has failed add beauty to this poem. The apt use of the lowercase i instead of a capital I is another attraction. Thus this poem of resistance and self-assertion written by Clifton is undoubtedly a poem to be celebrated in every sense. To see him again, Gabriela Mistral. Gabriela Mistral, who was born in 1889 and who died in the year 1957, is a Chilean poet, educator and a diplomat, who was the first Latin American poet to receive the Nobel Prize in 1945. Her real name was uh, Lucilla Godoy Alkayaga. She coined her name from her favorite poets Gabriela de Anunzio and Frederick Mistral. Celebrated Chilean author Pablo Neruda was deeply influenced by her. Her love for the downtrodden and poor as well as personal sorrows is uh, well reflected in her poetry. The suicide of her uh, first lover had a traumatic uh, impact on her life. Gabriela Mistral's To See Him Again depicts the intense grief and trauma following the loss of her lover. She realizes that she can't see him at night packed with a few stars in the morning and in the afternoons, neither at the edge of a pale road that encircles the fields nor upon the rim of a, a trembling fountain never beneath the forest's luxuriant poplar trees where she yelled at him once. Not in the grotto that returned the echo of her words. Just to see him again, she is ready to go even to heaven's dead water and inside the boiling hole of hell. She wants to get united with him again and embrace him, putting her hands around his neck. Here, the painted knot around his bloody neck also has a reference 
to the suicide of the lover by hanging himself it happened on the day when she held to him beneath the poplar tree one night now she is ready even to die to meet her lover thus mistral has broken heartedly conveyed her emotions of her grief and loss towards her dead lover thus this poem that is translated into english by mariela griffer ascends from the personal melancholic stage to a stage of a eulogy that speaks of the universal experience of grief and loss at the end the effective imagery used in this poem appeals to the senses of sight and sound repetition is another literary device that portrays the intense emotions of desire and longing of the poet A century later, Imtiaz Darkar. Imtiaz Darkar, born in 1954, is a renowned poet, artist, and filmmaker. Though she was born in Lahore, Pakistan, as her family migrated to Glasgow, she spent her formative years in UK. She describes herself as a Scottish Muslim Calvinist. She was appointed as the Chancellor of Newcastle University from 2020. She has six collections of poetry to her credit with Poetry Live, an organization formed by her deceased husband, Simon Powell, she reads poetry to thousands of students every year traveling across countries along with celebrated poets apart from exhibiting her paintings she has directed near around 300 films gender justice identity geographical and cultural displacements and communal conflicts are the recurring themes in her poetry imtiaz darkers a century later written in 2014 alludes to wilfred owens a century old celebrated war poem anthem for doomed youth it draws a comparison between school going girls and soldiers in the war front the school ground is also compared to battle ground the school girls in the poem are striving for education and to attain their egalitarian rights they are all denied by those in power the poem specifically alludes the shooting of malala yusufzai in 2012 a girl who is from her school is the target of the gunmen when they shoot but she continues to walk the bullet cuts a pathway in her mind she reaches an orchard full of poppies now the girl has won the right to be ordinary now she can wear bangles paint her fingernails and go to school so she tells now 
that the bullet is stupid and so it has failed it can't kill a book or the knowledge and wisdom in it there is a swarm coming the school girls take their places on the front line to get their education and rights malala yusuf sai who survived the bullet continued her education in england and was awarded nobel peace prize in 2014 for her fight for the right of education to all girls through this poem imtiaz darkar urges girls to assert their identity and be proud of their womanhood they have to line up in the fight and win the battle moreover the symbols and imagery in the poem and the onomatopoeic words like buzzing murmur and humming echo the rising and awakening of a revolution text carol and duffy carol and duffy who was born in 1955 was the first female poet laureate of the uk in 2009 and a queer duffy's writings of a compassionate insight into overlooked female and marginalized viewpoints her works delve into both personal conflicts and larger social issues duffy's text is a short eight line poem that offers a sad perspective on how over reliance on technology for communicating can remove authentic human connection from romance here she talks about the over analyzing of the romantic text messages from the partners and the limitations of the digital only communication though the poetess uses mobile phone for texting messages she only treats it as an injured bird as the messages are in broken code they are not strong and deep a text message misses the warmth and affection that one can find in a face to face talk they can only be felt in the tone voice physical closeness and in the touch though the small excess represent kisses in a text message it lacks the real warmth of the beloved so the love and affection that are sent through the blurred text will never be heard thus the poet concludes the poem with a sobering note regarding the over reliance on technology the 14 lines of this poem are divided into seven couplets the poet has used simile repetition asyndeton and epigram to make this poem a memorable one her comparing the phone to an injured bird and the repetition of the word text attract us similarly omission of a conjunction in first second third rereading and the paradoxical usage of heard towards the end make the poem remember worthy